Okay, perfect. Let's start. Um, welcome to Composer and Drupal 8. Um, I'm, my name is Rainer Friedrich. Uh, you find me at Twitter, Drupal.org, or GitHub under Yobotech. Um, I work for Wanderers in Switzerland, Basel. Um, this session will be without live coding because Composer needs the internet and the fast internet connection and also downloads lots of stuff. So uh, I hope you can live with screenshots. And um, I personally started Drupal at version 8, so I have no knowledge of Drupal in the earlier versions. Um, and I'm not a Drupal developer per se, but a PHP developer with Drupal knowledge. And in all PHP projects I built, I use Composer. So I also wanted to use Composer in Drupal. And this will be about um, Composer in theory and practice. So look at the theory, how Composer is working. And look in practice in Drupal 8 projects, how you can leverage the power of Composer for your projects so Composer can help you. Yes, we're going to talk about Composer in general. This includes semantic versioning, um, Composer commands, Composer plugins, scripts, and how the generated autoloader will look like. Um, we will look at Composer in Drupal 8, like the Drupal core implementation of Composer, and the Drupal Composer project you will find on GitHub. Then we'll look at best practices, from, learned from like 10 Composer projects we have productive. And we are going to look what, at what's happening next. So there is really much happening right now in Drupal Composer, since every week uh, there is changing something. And I will show you what's happening right now and what will happen in the next half year. Um, I spared some time at the end, because probably some of you will have tried to use Composer and have some questions. So there will be like 15 minutes at the end to answer your questions. If you have questions in between, um, Composer really depends everything on everything. So everything will be uh, explained. Just wait until the end, to, then you can ask your questions. Um, OK, let's start with Composer in general. Um, first of all, Composer is about dependency management. So who of you has ever worked with Composer before in Drupal 8? <laughs> okay, roughly the half. Who of you has worked with Node.js and NPM before? Yeah, that's more people. So nobody who uses Node.js would download a Node.js dependency without NPM. You won't go to a website and download a Node.js module and install it by hand. You would use N N NPM for that. So why should you do that in PHP? And Composer is your friend. He helps you managing dependencies. Um, Composer is stable since April 16, after five years of development. Like, building a package manager is really hard. And it's the first project local dependency management system for PHP. Like, Maven is for Java or NPM is for Node.js. And um, there were some PHP packaging libraries before, like Peer or Peckel, but this was not project local. So, Let's get started with Composer. First of all, you need to go to getcomposer.org and download the, the composer.far file, install it. And the next thing you need to manage dependencies is that it, there you need to know about every library and the dependencies of the libraries and the dependencies of the dependencies. So you need traversal of transitive dependencies. And for Composer, this is packages. Um, what you also need is a unified versioning system, because if every library would declare its own versioning system, then uh, you would, wouldn't have uh, a chance for, for a composer, wouldn't give composer a chance to uh, resolve all the dependencies. So this is semantic versioning. And the, the last thing you need is like you need a file where you can declare your dependencies and you can declare your autoloading strategy. And this is the composer JSON file you have seen <coughs> in Drupal core or some Drupal modules. Let's first look at semantic versioning. So, like I said, semantic versioning is um, the unified versioning standard for Composer, or like the real complete software development process right now. 
And uh, it's like this, you have major.minor.patch. Major is the, if you increase the major version, you, uh, the code you pushed involves some backward compatibility changes. So if you upgrade from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, you need to adjust some code that will work. If you update from Drupal 8.0 to 8.1, it should work. So this is a minor upgrade. And a minor upgrade means you have new features and bug fixes and all the stuff. And the last is the patch release, like your bug fixes, uh, translations, documentation, patches, security fixes, and so on. Um, yeah, like Drupal Core in the version right now is semantic versions, not like Drupal Contrib. We'll talk about that later. Um, let's look at packages, and there we will take an example of the library Twig. So I hope you can read it somehow. It's not so clear. Um, you can see the name of the library, some description, then where to find the source code, the issues list, um, who has wrote the software, who is responsible, uh, all releases, um, what's the current version, the requirements of the library. Twig now only requires PHP greater than or equal 5.2.7. When you want, want to develop with Twig, you need a Symfony a PHP unit bridge and Symfony debug. And yeah, that's the complete metadata that uh, packages generates out of the composer JSON file of Twig. Um, this is the composer JSON file of Twig. You see the name of the library, the type, it's like type library now, but um, we will look at composer library types later. Um, you see the authors, the license, and very much metadata. And in the next uh, part of the composer JSON, you will see the require part, where this PHP requirement is set. The require dev uh, requirements are set, like to PHP unit bridge and Symfony debug. You see the auto-loading strategy of this library, like Twig is using PSR0 for auto-loading. This is an old standard, but we will talk about auto-loading later. And at this extra, um, you just said if someone is requiring dev master, then give him 1.24 minus dev. Um, as you can see, there are version constraints at uh, the required devs, like tiles 2.7. Let's look what's possible with version constraints in Composer. The first is you have exact version constraints. It's like you want version 1.3.0. It's like, or you require Drupal Core 8.0.5. It's like, even if you update with Composer, you will always get this version. Rarely no one uses this. Um, so you have range constraints. Like, give me a library that is greater than equal 1.0. But this will also install version 2.0, which you probably don't want because you had to adjust some other code of your project. So you are uh, more precise and say you want a version greater than equal 1.0, but smaller than 2.0. So this will give you every library in, one point, in the one point product lifecycle, but nothing from the two dot product lifecycle. You can also work with wildcards, like 1.0 point wildcards gives you every library when it's updated at 1.0.7 to 1.0.8. Um, and the wildcard operator like equals this, greater than 1.0 but smaller than 1.1. Then you can use the tiled operator like we have seen in the composer JSON file of Twig. And um, like tiles 1.2, um, equals greater than 1.2, smaller than 2.0. And there is a special thing about tiled. If you say um, tiled 1.2.3, this tiled operator works on the last digit, so you will get this. Probably not what you would expect, um, but that what you expect is the carry operator. It's like when you say carry 1.2.3, you will get this version constraints you would expect. So if you want to work on the last digit, take the tiled operator. If you want to work on the complete um, product lifecycle of one software version, use the carry operator. Um, if you develop own, li own libraries um, for your dependencies, also use the carry operator for maximum uh, compatibility. And 
as next we're going to look at interacting with Composer through the CLI. This is the main command everyone knows that used Composer once. Um, it's Composer install. Uh, Composer install, you go to the um, folder where your Composer JSON lies and you type Composer install. And Composer tries to find a suitable set of libraries that are okay for your dependencies. If it can find this, it would download them in the vendor folder and create an autoload file for them. It will also create a file called, called uh, composer.log. And the composer.log file um, is like a set of dependencies in a specific version that you can always install. So when you look at the composer.log file, it's also JSON. You just see the library Twig Twig and one really specific version. Yes. So even if you would require a Twig tiled 1.0, um, in the composer.log file, this would be 1.24.1. Um, yes, there are many more commands. I will go through them uh, really quick. Um, composer updates. Um, composer updates. Composer updates is like composer install, but it ignores your log file and updates your log file after it installs. So if you have a log file and run composer install, you will always get the same dependencies. If you run composer update, it will search for newer version of versions of your dependencies and it will update your dependencies, update your, and update your composer log file. Um, then there is composer require, like you have a project and you want to um, require Twig because you want to use it. Um, composer require updates your composer JSON file with your new, new dependency and installs the new dependencies and with the install it updates your log file and um, yes. Okay, then there is composer outdated. It's a real, uh, relatively new command. Uh, if you type composer outdated minus minus direct, it shows you your installed versions and all versions that are, are available on packages. So you see for every um, thing you use, what's the newest version and probably if you should upgrade. If you leave out the direct operator, um, you get this for all dependencies, so for dependencies of dependencies of dependencies. Um, then there is one thing we will use later, uh, it's Composer Create Project. It basically equals a git clone and Composer install after the clone. So a uh, Composer Create Project is like, if you create a Symfony project, you will create the project like this, or git clone and Composer install. So for Drupal, that means um, you can create a Drupal Composer project with this command, also Composer, Composer Create Project, Drupal Composer, Drupal Project. This is the namespace and pro project name on GitHub or packages. And if you do this, the following things will happen. Um, Composer is installing the data of the GitHub repository. It's cloning the data to the uh, specified, specified folder and created the new project. And then it's installing all dependencies and like Drupal 8 had less, like 80 dependencies. Um, so I made the short list. After it's ready with its dependencies, um, the libraries can suggest things for you to install. You can ignore the suggestions in the most cases. After the suggestions, the log file is being written. The auto load files are being generated. And if you have some scripts, like Composer Drupal Project has, the scripts are um, run. Um, so, until now, everything was about dependency management. But how should that, like, uh, deprecate Drush make? So we'll look at Composer plugins that allow us to do more powerful things with Drupal on install. And um, yes, some examples. The first one is Composer Installers. Composer Installers allows us to install different library types into different directories. So if you look at the Composer JSON of the redirect module for Drupal 8, it has the uh, type Drupal module. Yes. And in the installer path section of our project repository, of our project Composer JSON, 
you can specify installer passes and say for the type Drupal module, install it in this folder. And in this case, Drupal core should go in another folder. So this allows us to have different types of packages on packages and install them into different directories like we need them when we want to use the project. The next thing is composer patches. Um, like everyone applies patches to their projects, you also need to do this with composer. So um, you can just specify a list of patches in your composer JSON file. Like we want to apply four patches to Drupal core, uh, two to file entity, one to search API, and one to uh, redirect for login um, module. And every time you install the dependency or update the dependencies, um, the patches are going to be applied afterwards. And if the patches don't apply anymore, then Composer will throw an error and you can't install the project. So there is no chance to like crush the project with a Composer update because we'll always see that the patches are going to apply or not. Um, the next is Composer Merge plugin. Um, I wouldn't use it. I have it here because Core uses it. Um, if you look at the Composer JSON in the root folder of uh, the tarball of uh, Drupal 8, if you download it, there is a Composer JSON and it has a Composer Merge plugin. And Composer Merge plugin just merges multiple Composer JSONs together. So the core folder in the tarball of Drupal has its own Composer JSON and um, they're just merged together. You can also use this if you have Composer JSONs in custom modules that you don't ho host at GitHub or something, but just uh, local in your code, and you want to provide a Composer JSON in your um, local module, you can also use Composer Merge plugin. Um, there's Rove security advisories. That's really nice. Um, there is a global list of PHP packages and all their security issues. And if you install Rove security advisories plugin into Composer, it will forbid to install a version of a software that has security issues. Um, there's a fork of this for Drupal called Drupal Security Advisories um, that will work together with the Drupal security team. So um, like that's a really cool feature. Um, there are many more plugins. They're like on GitHub, there are like 5,000 plugins. Um, there's Bower plugin where you can install Bower dependencies or a Node.js plugin where you can install Node.js dependencies. Or like, you shouldn't use Composer for everything, yes, um, but you could if you would want. So um, the next thing is scripts. Like um, everyone knows scripts. You have some events like post install, post update, uh, post autoload dump, um, and many more. There are like 30 core events, but you can also define your own events. And um, you can run a script after an event. And like, if you look at the Drupal Composer project, Composer JSON, there is a script section, and you see at what event should what be done. There is a custom co uh, custom event called Drupal scaffold, yeah, where uh, from a PHP class the method scaffold is uh, is run, and there is a post install command and a post update command, where from a local script the create required files method is run. And um, the, the create required files method just ensures that every file you need is there and has the right permissions. And the, uh, the scaffold plugin changes like every week because uh, Drupal Composer is evolving and this plugin is changing all the time. So now it does like nothing, I think. Um, two weeks before it did a lot. Um, so we'll, I'll leave this out. Um, the next thing you can see is from the uh, FDMI Drupal 8 skeleton. Um, it has a post create project command which calls a PHP script and this PHP script um, allows you to configure your complete site via command line interface. It's also really nice. Um, so the next step we're going to look at is autoloading. Um, Composer generates autoload files which you can use in your project afterwards. Well, just because Composer is downloading all the files doesn't mean you can use them. You would still have to require them, and that would be awful. So, um, 
what was it before auto loading? You had code like this in your PHP file. Yes. We had like uh, require all the libraries you want and require all the local code you want and a config file and the database extraction layer and so on. And if you look now in Drupal 8 index.php, you have this. You require once autoload PHP. Autoload PHP requires the autoload files that Composer has generated. And then you just use this autoloader. If you look at the files Composer is generating, um, this is the vendor folder of Composer. Um, and you see many files like autoload class map, autoload files, autoload namespaces, autoload PSR4, autoload real, autoload static. And um, the files are generated automatically based on the um, libraries you are using. So if you're only using new libraries, then probably only PSR4 file will be generated. If you're using Drupal 8 with like 80 dependencies, every file is being generated. Um, we will go through um, each of them quick. Like um, PSR 0, um, I showed you before in the Twig library, is the old standard for PHP for autoloading. Um, it was a bit strict, so they uh, lowered the strictness and created uh, PSR 4. PSR 4 is like PSR 0, but it only supports namespaced code. So that's why you have to use namespaces in Drupal 8. And um, it does not force you to use the complete namespace as directory structure. You can have a different namespace in different folders and everything. Um, then there is files. If you have old libraries, this is an example of Swift Mailer. Um, Swift Mailer de deploys its own autoloader. It has the Swift required PHP where it does all its own autoloading stuff. So it's telling Composer to autoload this file. Um, then there is class map. This is the fastest autoloading method that you uh, can have in Composer right now. Um, it's just telling Composer what files and what classes it should load. <coughs> um, you can automate this. It's like you can use PS PSR4 uh, autoloading in your library and tell Composer on install or update optimize autoloader and it will go through all the files you provided and generate a giant class map file for you where every file is located. So it hasn't, doesn't have to look afterwards where the file is located. OK, so much for Composer in Siri. Let's look at Composer in Drupal 8. So the first thing, um, everyone that has a library like Commerce or something and Commerce has a Composer dependency, the first thing you stumble upon is Composer Manager. Composer Manager also exists in Drupal 8. But um, if you look at this tweet from uh, Boyan, he said he released the final version and uh, it's deprecated, and if you're using it, you, you should stop. Yes? And that's why Composer Manager solves a problem that's not a problem anymore. Yes? So um, you should really build your projects using Composer, not just downloading module dependencies, as dependencies of your modules with Composer. So let's just use vanilla Composer. So you're all de PHP developers, get off the island, and so on use Composer. And if you look at the Drupal Composer project, yes, you can find it at GitHub. Just look it up later. Um, it's Drupal Composer Drupal project. If you look at Drupal Composer, they have some really nice libraries in there which you can use. And just create the Drupal Composer project like, we ha like you have seen before with the create project command. It's in the readme of the project. And to understand what it does, we're going to look at the Composer JSON of the Drupal Composer project. So you have all this metadata, it's type project. Um, and this is the first really interesting thing. You have a repositories type composer and with an URL to packages.drupalcomposer.org. Um, there's nothing wrong with the normal packages. I showed you where Twig is lying. Yes. Just there was a discussion in Drupal. If Drupal should use the normal packages, that would be very difficult because of semantic versioning for contract modules, like Drupal 8 doesn't have this right now. And um, 
with like 100,000 modules, we would just flood packages. So the decision was made to create an own packages or own comp composer facet, like it's now. Um, if you go to this, this URL, um, it's going to tell you that it's deprecated and it's going to be closed in January. And then uh, Drupal.org now has a composer facet. I will show you the URL for this, this later. Um, then you have the require section. And the require section uh, requires comp the composer installers plugin, the uh, Drupal scaffold plugin, the composer patches plugin, uh, you require Drupal core at least in version 8. Then you want Drush and you want Drupal console. Yes. So, and um, the question is, where is Drupal core coming from? Can anyone answer this? No? Okay, let's, let's ask composer. If you're doing composer info Drupal slash core, it tells you where the code lies. It knows. Yeah? And the code for Drupal, uh, for Drupal core is on GitHub. It's a little bit strange because every commitment is going on uh, Drupal.org. But there is no official substree split of core right now. So um, the guys of the Drupal Composer project are creating the substree split of Drupal core you can use via Composer themselves via a script. And they publish this to GitHub. So this is on GitHub. And it is on packages, so Composer can find it. And you can use Drupal Core through Composer. If you want to look at the script that creates Drupal Core for GitHub, you can, have it, you can look it up at Drupal Composer slash Drupal Core. Um, yes. Let's look further in the Composer JSON file. Um, you have a required dev section, um, where you require all these cool testing libraries. In the conflict section, you just say you can't install Drupal in Drupal. Makes sense. Um, then you're saying uh, you're OK with development dependencies, but you prefer, sta prefer stable ones. And because we are providing one script file with our project, uh, we have to tell Composer how we are autoloading this. And this file lies in script Composer script handler, and we are autoloading it via class map. Then we have the script sections that calls after install and update command the create required files uh, function. And after Drupal, Drupal scaffold, the calls the Drupal scaffold plugin. Then we have this extra section with installer passes for type Drupal core, type Drupal module, Drupal profile, Drupal theme, and Drupal Drush for Drush extensions. And you can provide, if you are using Acquia or something, you can just write doc root there. It will work. Um, but that's like the boilerplate code, like the skeleton you can use. Um, if you look at the real project composer JSON now, um, I'll show you some parts. This is the correct to use repository right now. It's from packages.drupal.org slash eight. For Drupal seven, it's packages.drupal.org slash seven. And um, it's a little bit buggy, but if you, if you are requiring um, Release, release versions and not some branches. It works really well. There are some libraries that are kind of bugged, like um, taxonomy menu, for example, gets installed in the vendor folder. I don't know why. It is type Drupal project, uh, Drupal module. Um, the require section of your composer JSON will look like something like this. Um, you require file entity, path auto, entity reference revisions, paragraphs, like all these modules. And um, you can see the version number is a little bit strange. So when you develop a project in a model in Drupal 8, it has like this branch 8.x uh, minus 1.x, for example. So we're requiring version everything above for paragraphs, every, everything above 1.0, but not version 2. There is a mapping on the Drupal.org um, composer facet that maps this version to a semantic versioning version. So you can use composer. You couldn't use composer with the Drupal.org naming conventions, the Drupal module naming conventions. Um, yes. Uh, okay. There is 
if you are still using Drupal Composer packages, like you want to try it, and you are downloading the, um, you are creating your Drupal Composer project with Drupal packages, um, there's even another version matching, like you have 8.x minus 2.1 will be 8.2.0. Um, oh, sorry, 0.1, I'm sorry. And if you are losing, uh, using the Drupal.org packages, you will have this mapping. So if you are switching from Drupal Composer packages to Drupal.org packages, you have to adjust your version constraints. Um, then we go further in the, in the composer JSON of our project. We have like, we're only using Drupal core and modules, so we don't need themes and trash extensions and everything. Um, we just have these two passes. Then we have some patches that we apply to our project. And that's it. If you, um, if you deploy your project to a new server where no uh, dependencies are and you run composer install, you will have a completely fine built project. And everything is documented. Okay, so some best practices. First of all, if it's somehow possible for you, do not commit the stuff Composer installed. Like, do not commit core to your, to your repository, do not commit your modules to your repository, and do not commit the vendor folder. Um, the next thing is, um, do not use Composer on your production server. Like, if you want to deploy code on the server and you run Composer install on the server and something goes wrong, you have a broken project on production. Yes? Never use Composer on a server itself. Um, deactivate xdebug while running Composer. It's like 10 times the speed. Um, commit your log file. Um, it allows you for re reproducible builds. If you don't commit your log file and you type compose install, you have no idea what you will get. Yes, you will get just the newest version. You don't know if it, if it works. If you commit it, you have a version that you know that works. Um, do not change anything in the download libraries. Create a patch for it and write the patch in your composer patches plugin. Or if you can't patch something, like there's this library, um, simple SAML PHP, where you have to do the configuration in the vendor, in the vendor folder itself. Just create the, the configuration outside of your vendor folder and create a composer script that just copies the configuration after install. Um, if you change anything in the vendor folder and you run, run composer install or composer update, your changes are gone. There, you need there some automatization. Um, like I told you before, composer JSON files in custom modules of your project are tricky, um, but you can always host your project on GitHub or your own private uh, repository, Bitbucket or something, GitLab, and just require it via Composer. You can add in the repository section of your composer JSON. You can add uh, version control systems, and you can just add your repository, your Git repository, for this project you have on GitLab, of your private GitLab, and then Composer uses your SSH key to determine if you can download this, and if you can download this, just download it. So if you have modules you share over multiple projects, just create a repository, push your code there, require it in every project via Composer JSON, and it works fine. Um, okay, next thing is, Probably, if you're using Acquia Cloud, for example, they don't have Composer support at the moment. If you commit your vendors, like the vendor folder, the module folder, and the core folder, to your um, Git, beware of submodules. Like, if you're requiring um, a branch or dev master, for example, then Composer will not install the uh, distribution, distribution package, like the zip file and unzip it, but it will clone the project with the .git directory. So this is a submodule. You cannot commit a submodule to your main repository. You have to create a script that deletes all git directories in your vendor folder, for example, to commit your vendors completely correctly. 
Um, do not use Composer for everything. Like I said, you can could download um, Bower dependencies with it. Don't do this. Don't do this. Even I'm not a friend of requiring uh, tools by a composer, like Drush, Drupal Console, PHP units. These are all tools and not code I want to use. Like, you can, of all these tools, you can install the FAR file. Yes. There is uh, something ri arising that's called FAR.io. It's like a composer, but not for code dependencies, but for tool dependencies. And you can add a five file to your, uh, to your repository. That will then install the tools. The positive things about installing tools via FAR.io is that you don't have code completion in your IDE for code you don't want to complete, like dependencies of PHP unit and PHP unit itself. Um, the speed of indexing in PHP Swarm will be much faster because if you require PHP unit via Composer, it downloads 16,000 files. Yes, so that would be an option. Um, next thing is run Composer using PHP 7. Um, it's much faster than PHP 5 and even in terminal. Um, then there is a plugin called Hyrack Prestissimo and it allows Composer to parallel download the files. This will somehow, in the next few months, go into, core, uh, in, into uh, Composer itself, but now you can use this. Okay, so what's next? That's the current status. Um, the first thing that's uh, happening right now is uh, Drupal.org is working hard on improving Composer support for the uh, Composer facet of Drupal.org. And um, let's look at some li libraries. Uh, probably you know Drupal VM. And Drupal VM uses Composer as the main building tool for the Drupal project in Drupal Composer with, since version 3.1. You can still use Drush Make, but it's deprecated. And um, what's really nice about Drupal VM is Drupal VM is on packages. So in your required dev section, you can just write, I want Drupal VM for my development. And then um, Composer is going to download the files you need to start the Drupal VM. And you can still configure it outside from the vendor folder in just some config folder at your, Composer, uh, at your project's root level. It's really nice. Um, the next thing is a Drupal console, also standardized on downloading modules via Composer. And uh, with version 1.0, this will be the case. There's still the option to download the modules via FTP, but the standard will be uh, Composer. If you create the project on Platform SH, um, they also standardized on Composer. If you create a new Drupal 8 project there, you will directly get PHP 7 and Composer project, which you can check out. Um, there is this tool called Acquia BLT, formerly Bolt, um, and it's a command line tool to create new Drupal 8 Composer projects for you. Um, and Acquia will release a, re a build tool with Composer support for Acquia Cloud some when this year. Um, yeah, and you probably know DropGuard, it's a continuous update platform, and they will also support Composer. So no, not update your code directly, just update your composer, JSON and composer.log file. Or just open a pull request for you to do this. Um, so I said I'm a PHP developer and I'm always uh, working with composer. So there are still some things I don't like how composer works in Drupal 8. Um, and I have an idea how to solve this, and this is called composer mode. If you were working with a Symfony project, you don't have to install modules. You just have to add one line of code and say this module is installed. Yes. So if you look at other CMS around, uh, Typo3 has a composer mode since version 7.3. And if you activate composer mode, there you can't change anything with modules in the backend. Like the uh, update module is completely disabled. And if you install a module via Composer, 
it automatically installs it into Drupal. And if you uninstall it via Composer, it automatically uninstalls it from Drupal. Uh, typo 3, sorry, Typo 3. We're still talking about Typo 3. Um, this is a little bit difficult to achieve for Drupal because um, <laughs> we have configuration management um, where it stands what modules are installed. Um, you would need, like, if you just delete the folder of code, there is no uninstall script anymore, so we would need to um, cache the uninstall script. And, yes, it was, would be my dream to use Drupal 8 like that. It's a little bit like one year in the future right now, but it will be possible. And yes, now let's talk how to use Composer right now. Um, I said don't commit your vendor, reposit your vendor folders. Um, Use hosting provider with Composer support. Um, there are some big ones like Platform SH, uh, Pensin, Heroku, and Fort Rabbit. If you choose a hosting on any of them, um, there is like a build step before the code is deployed where your Composer dependencies are downloaded. Um, if you want to stick with your current um, with your current hosting. Um, use a specific continuous integration or continuous deployment server. Um, there are some hosted services like Codeship, Jenkins, or uh, on a Codeship, Codeship or Shippable. Or you can host your own Jenkins or host your own uh, drone and just continuous and deploy your code to your server and build your own build step in the continuous delivery platform. Um, there are some side effects of Composer I really like. Like you have complete documentation of the build step of your project. Every developer that uh, gets to work with the project can look at the Composer JSON file and see what's really required to build this project. And um, it combines really good with continuous integration um, because together with the Composer JSON file and like a Travis file or some service you're using, you have a really good documentation about your complete pro uh, product lifecycle, like from code to server, what has to happen. Yes. Um, again, the main points, use Composer, but beware using Composer for everything. Yes. Um, and really embrace it. It's your friend. It's trying to help you not to make your life difficult. If you have done it like five times, it's really easy. And that's it. Uh, are there some questions? No questions? OK. Um, I don't. I don't like, uh, like I, for me, it's like I type composer require and it should be enough to install the module. Yes, so why should it need two steps? It's like one step too much. Other questions? Yes? Yes, um, if you if you look at Drupal VM, they really, really um, struggled with the decision to make Composer the standard for building a project because the first time they, um, they built Drupal VM with Composer, um, it took like double the time of Drush Make. Yes? And uh, there are some pull requests at Composer that are discussed at the moment that will increase the speed. And with the Prestissimo plugin, you can right now reach the speed of Trash Make. It's no difference. You can like download 10 things in, se in sequence and um, just deactivate xdebug and use PHP 7 on the command line and it will be really fast. Yes? Yes. Um, Drupal.org automatically generates the um, information it needs out of the module's info file. If you, are, if you have your module not on Drupal.org but on GitHub, you need to 
um, have your composer JSON file. Any more questions? Okay, then I want to thank the sponsors for making this possible. And thank you for attending and have a nice last day.